I didn't face myself fully <laughs> before I made this teaching. Um, I, I cultivated a lot of um, positive thoughts and it was helpful, but it was not satisfying. It was nice, but I wasn't so happy. I had ha happy thoughts, but I wasn't so happy. And I didn't know that, so I just lived my life like that and um, just chasing after positive experiences, positive thoughts and sensations and things that I thought that they're really good to have in me. Or people I really loved, beautiful people, nice vibe, nice energy. So all of these things I just collected over, over uh, 25 years. I made the teaching when I was 25, so grateful. So it was, uh, I love that question of what it means to face myself completely as we are and as we are. Because I, I think, I didn't know what it means until I did the 12 empowerments. I, I had lots of expectations of myself. Lots, like who, who doesn't have expectations? <laughs> I just admit we have so many expectations. And I, I shared with you once, I wanted to change everything that appeared. Firstly, all the negative things I immediately wanted to change because I didn't want to feel negative. I didn't want others to feel negative, especially my family, friends I loved so much, and um, other, other beings, <laughs> animals, or whatever ideas you have about life. So I, I always try to uh, really um, be good. And we all tried our best and we can look at our experience and we can see that we just know what we know and we do our best to live a life that is uh, of benefit, that is fulfilling. But when I did the 12 empowerment, it was so, um, it, facing myself as I am was not uh, like, uh, wow, that's amazing, you know. <laughs> it wasn't like, wow, it's so beautiful, I love to see myself as I am. You probably have those <laughs> expectations where you feel, okay, facing yourself, you probably will be some kind of a Buddha or something. <laughs> but you know, it was just so real. It was just so, so true and so um, life-changing for me to really look at everything. I put so much power, energy, emphasis, and really so deeply believed with all my beings. I really believed it means something about me. It means something about people. It means something about my mother, my father, my sister, my, the world, <coughs> my uh, Israel. <laughs> you know, it means something about my husband. So everything, I put so much power over these data streams. I emphasized an entire story that called myself and my life. And I repeat that many times. <laughs> I repeat the story of my life to myself and to others, and I made everyone believe that too. And that's the way I lived. So again, being a positive person was great. I came actually so happy to this teaching. I didn't try to change myself, but something just like, you know, it was so um, touching exactly where I needed to hear. I heard nothing about you need to change. And that was like, you know, like something is just opening. Everything is, can rest as it is. You can allow everything to be as it is. Okay, but you know, even if it brings, after that moment of recognition that you can really rest mind and body completely for an instant, and then a bunch of data comes like resistance or what do you think you are, or you know, what do you mean this, negative thoughts, I don't want to leave them as they are. What do you look at the world? What do you think? And how can I leave that as it is and look rape and, you know, and uh, killing and, and bombing and, you know, just look at everything. And again, just open up to the direct introduction and to the nature of mind and look at the data in, in its essence. Now, okay, not to look at the data like you're watching a, a movie. You know, you look at the TV and you watch the data. We talked about it before, right? It's not the point. And, and that's one of the things I've done also before, watching my feelings, watching my thoughts, watching my emotions. But it didn't lead to any relief. It didn't lead 
to any satisfaction, to an action that I re could really take and make something beneficial out of it. So the only outcome that came from it is that I'm aware of my thoughts and emotions. That was the most of it. I'm aware of my thoughts and emotions. But what do I do with this? What do I do with all of this mess of <laughs> thoughts and emotions, especially that they're not nice? That even if I try to be as the nicest person I can be, I still have negative thoughts. You know, I still, there are things I don't accept. Or I still have lots of expectations. What do I do with that? So people would tell me, you shouldn't have expectations. Wow, that's great to hear. Thank you. <laughs> really helpful. Thanks. I still have the expectations. And they made me understand, really, what does it mean that you have the expectation? Just imagine that he has the same expectation. And OK, and I could really understand that logically. But still, in my guts, mm -hmm. expectations, very much, lots. <laughs> lots of, even more, even more, OK? <laughs> Didn't help. And some I had, okay, just, just be strong, and you know everything will be fine. That was nice to hear. But there were times I just didn't want to hear that. <laughs> just go away. I don't want to hear that. I feel bad, okay? I feel bad. Don't want to hear, feel, be strong. <laughs> so it's, and you know, with my love and respect for my friends, and you know, that time, I, of course, I took it in. I said, thank you so much. And I, I took lots of support from friends and the love and understanding. But inside, if I would look at myself and face myself as I am, I didn't feel really happy with that. So it was always looking, looking for a lift, looking for um, benefit, looking for solutions, trying to be more positive, trying to exceed my expectations, and then having more expectations. Because they were not also, even if I made the same expectation, I was never good enough, <laughs> right? They're also disappointment. It's amazing. It's, it's just like we cannot control the flow of the data streams. It's so wild. And look at yourself right now sitting here. Can you really plan what you will think in a moment? Do you remember what you thought when you just came this morning? Or what was your thoughts and feelings? You might remember, but can you hold it in place? Some people told me, OK, just be in the here and now. What is it? <laughs> what is it? How can I, I can, how can I just be here in the here and now and then it's just, it slips, you know, it slips. So to get real <laughs> and to really stop thinking for a moment, recognize what remains at the basis of everything that appears, open intelligence. This is open intelligence, there is alertness cognizance, openness, the power to know. That's the introduction. That's just the introduction to open intelligence, to recognize what is at the basis of everything that appears. Where does it come from? <laughs> Did we ever ask ourselves where does it come from? We can call it in like special names and everything, but just look at your own direct experience. Yeah, forget about what I'm saying. Look at your own direct experience and see for yourself. When you stop thinking for a moment what remains, and when you start thinking, what remains? <laughs> Does it go anywhere? Did it go? Did it leave you? The power to know that you are thinking, that you are not thinking, that you are feeling, that you are sensing. It's that power that never leaves us. That's the power of our mind. Now, this power is, is really amazing. Not first step is to be introduced to it, properly be introduced to it, and then train it up. How do we train it up? And now I shared it, the practice, and you heard before, it's a short moment of open intelligence, repeated many times, until it becomes continuous. Now, a short moment, it's not like uh, a glass. You know, it's not like something that you take it. It's, it's, a, it's a really a short moment. <laughs> so it's, it's a short moment that you just allow yourself to completely relax relax body and mind, and recognize, instinctively recognize, what is at the basis of everything. And these short moments, they grow longer when you re repeat them. So it's not like uh, we need to force ourselves to that. 
like I felt very false you asked about other practices to watch my feelings and emotions and I did it as a practice so this it's more uncontrived effortless it's like whenever you remember to do so so you don't even need to prepare yourself to that it will just come to your mind and whenever you remember you take a short moment a short moment of allowing everything to be exactly as it is exactly as it is without trying to reject what comes up without trying to avoid it without trying to think about it mm, what, why do I have that why digging in that you know trying to find the reason for why do you have this kind of data stream so not to do that that's a short moment of not doing that okay and then also not not I for myself for me it was a good practice not to try to be positive to let the data be exactly as it is for an instant and even if it's brief and then again all the thoughts and emotions and then again you're avoiding and replacing but then again you remember short moment so you repeat this recognition many times whenever you remember and y you have to test it I can share and it sounds really amazing but each of us it's up to us to try it and see how it works so for me when I tried the short moments it was um, it brought initially oh, nothing happened oh everything is the same but then the instruction is to repeat that recognition okay and then I start to really experience immediate relief a sense of stability clarity um, availability openness openness to myself facing myself as I am looking at all my data without trying to change them looking at the data as they are so that was a relief a recognition of wow so good so good I don't need to be positive I can really be negative you know like having the negative thoughts it doesn't mean that we will be some people think oh if I be negative I'll be out of control everyone will run away from me I thought that too so for me a short moment was a recognition of immediate benefit and also responsibility you know I could really take responsibility for everything that comes up for me because I allowed it to be as it is and what what happens with these short moments when you take short moment this data they self-release they arise and they self-release by themselves without us doing anything so that's very amazing it's like lightning in the sky you know like <laughs> like that lightning you have probably maybe afflictive states of expectations or resistance or whatever comes up then the lightning in the sky but then it's self-release and then another lightning but then it's self-release the sky remains completely open vast that's the nature of our mind and then um, our example it, we can have all kinds of ideas about role modeling but it's really you know my heartfelt suggestion is, is to focus on yourself you know to really see for ourselves what works for us even if we hear many opinions and many ideas and they're great oh they're really bad but look at what works for you do you see these results in your experience when you take a short moment when you come here when you expose to such introduction that is direct maybe sometimes it brings up so many things up but that's exactly what you need to see and open up with this amazing recognition recognition that is not really related to what kind of thoughts and feelings you have I, I was amazed by that to see that it doesn't matter what I think I feel the benefit I recognize the benefits in myself and others even though I have lots of negative thoughts so I have thoughts about resistance so I have opinions and suggestions it was such a relief for me to focus on that my direct experience and to settle there to really settle into what is true for me so that's the invitation here so the the 12 empowerments it's a point it's a crucial point where you have the choice to look at all of the belief systems everything we adopted really you know we really adopted we don't want to we don't want to give up on them just to look at them let them be as they are and to see them to recognize them for what they are 
and then having training up this instinctive recognition of open intelligence and um, opening up to our strengths, gifts, and talents, our contribution of our power to the world, taking responsibility for our life, for our relationships, and being of amazing benefit to ourselves and others.